Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to On the Bright Line podcast, tales from recovering food addicts from the perspective of a physician, a therapist, and an off-the-wall storyteller. We are not affiliated or endorsed by Bright Line Eating, and all content presented in this podcast represents our personal opinions and does not represent medical, nutritional, or psychological professional advice. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of On the Brightline podcast. Uh, as you can see, Bonnie is not in the physical room with us, but that is because she has been replaced by the wonderful Patty Mercosi. Just hey. kidding. Not not replaced. No, not at all. Uh, everybody Pat- now is there because that's how we roll. Right say now. it again. Say it again. Everybody's, my, everybody's at my house, but I'm not there. This yes. is true. Yes, we are hanging out at Bonnie's house without Bonnie. So thankfully, uh, her lovely husband, Clay, let us in and set us up with our recording equipment mm-hmm. so we could record this episode tonight. So anyway, uh, to, today, uh, we are here to talk to Patty um, about a lot of things, her BLE adventure, uh, yeah. but mostly about this amazing road trip that she's been on for the last four weeks. So uh, we are going to just jump right in. And the first thing I want you to do, Patty, is tell us about your BLE journey and how you got started. Uh, well, I saw TikTok in August of 2021 and, uh, thank goodness that she said, she didn't say it was no sugar, no flour, just said, read the book. Here's the book. And oh. I read the book. Thank goodness. Cause had she said no sugar, no flour, I would have laughed and scrolled. Well, like right? Bonnie said, right. Bonnie said no sugar, no flour. And I was like, heck no. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> big light. Thank you. No. Um, and I read the book and just knew immediately it would work and oh. that it was the missing piece. Mm-hmm. Um, still spent two months in terror before I could actually do it because all I ate was sugar and flour and fast food. Mm -hmm. Um, so I finally jumped and struggled with the vegetables, but figured it out and never looked back and, uh, lost my weight in a year. And I've been in maintenance for about 18 months now. So that's good. So you say struggle with the vegetables. Talk, talk a little bit more about the struggle with the vegetables. Yeah. Yeah, What's up, Bonnie? I said, you made all that sound too easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it wasn't easy. I, I really never ate vegetables before BLE. Never. Um, I ate more vegetables in the first four months of BLE than I did my entire life to that point. Not mm-hmm. even exaggerating. Like I just did not eat vegetables. So I heard somewhere that you could start much lower at six and six, which I started at six and six. So and- she's talking about lunchtime vegetables and dinnertime vegetables, six yes. ounces and six mm-hmm. ounces. Yes. And uh, gradually worked my way up, found vegetables that I like. I still remember the day that I found out pickles were considered vegetables in BLE. Oh, <laughs> oh that was a banner day in the Cozy household. <laughs> enjoyed that day a lot and still eat a lot of pickles to this mm-hmm. day. Uh, not on the road trip because it's weird. It's different. But um, yes. And worked my way up. I got to 10 and 10 um, ounces right before maintenance, figured I had to get there. I just went up seven and seven, eight and eight, nine and nine, right. nine and nine for a long time, made it to 10 and 10 and thought, oh, thank goodness. I'll never have to think about adding a vegetable again in my life. And mm-hmm. I never will. And that's it. Mm-hmm. I'm done at 10 and 10. And somehow my body told me I needed more vegetables. And now I eat 20 and 20 so oh, wow. ounces of vegetables a day, 40 ounces. And I love it. <laughs> Which is, that's the weird part yes. is that I enjoy mm-hmm. my vegetables a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other day we went out to dinner and I didn't feel like I got them. And I was, I was sad. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, yeah. It was weird. Vegetable sadness. Vegetable sadness. What an interesting shift. So Patty, so Patty, when you, you read that you, you saw the you saw the TikTok that made you read the book, but what, what was, what kind of motivated you to make the change or drove you to to leap in well i'll i'll tell you i was 273 pounds and really just killing myself with the fork slowly mm-hmm. and when i finally decided that i wanted to live i knew i had to make a choice i had to make a change because it wasn't working it, it wasn't i wasn't going to live and i didn't have the laps yeah. that megan had at all i mean i was definitely on blood pressure meds and pre-diabetic for years and years and always thought oh i'm pre i'm pre it's like pre-k i'm not in kindergarten right. yet right I'm, right. I'm not there i'll never get there right. i don't have to worry about it 
Um, uh, but yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't very healthy. And so I knew if I, if I was going to live, I had to make a change and I knew I, it was reading the book. I just knew it would work and I could see myself at the end. I really could. Yeah. And that How was fabulous. What, was there anything in particular in the book that spoke to you that jumped out? Really the, the, the powders, seeing the powders of sugar and flour mm. and cocaine and heroin, mm -hmm. it was like okay, I, mm -hmm. I get it. You know, yeah. the essence of, of the plant is what's really messing with me. And I have huge addiction issues, mm -hmm. um, in my family, extended family, mm -hmm. uh, you know, future generation. I mean, it's just in our family. Mm -hmm. And so I know a hundred thousand percent I'm, I'm a food addict yeah. and I, I, I will never, I, I, I say, you know, today I'm not eating sugar and flour. I, I say I'll, it will just never happen because I know I'll be back in the ditch. One of my friends said, I, I know I have another binge in me. I'm not sure I have another recovery in me. Mm -hmm. And so I just steer clear because I, I, I don't. So. Yeah. That's a great no. That's a Go mantra. Ahead, mm -hmm. No, I was like, that's great. That's so true. Yeah. So I think I, leading into the conversation about the trip, I really want to want you to talk about your support because I know that that's like a huge part of your BLE journey and like your support. So I'll stop talking. Absolutely. Talking. The support is everything in my program. And I, I've i set it up. When I first started BLE, I was off work for carpal tunnel surgery. I had surgery and it was extended. So I was off work uh -huh. for a long time. And during that time, I set up a lot of things. I have a buddy call after the AMAC or morning accountability call mm -hmm. every day. Somebody. So for people who don't know every day in the BLE community, the paid community, there's a morning call and an evening call for accountability. They're 30 mm -hmm. minute calls that a coach is on. People can raise their hand just for those that aren't in the community. So yes. guys, sorry. <laughs> yes. No. And I've dubbed them AMAC and PMAC, AMAC mm -hmm. and PMAC. And those are mine trademarked. So you're allowed to use them. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So I try to get to those calls as much as I can. And I do the noon zoom, which is a bright mm -hmm. and friendly, uh, unofficial. Right. Mm -hmm. um, We've talked about that on the podcast before. Yes. A great meeting and, uh, know a lot of people in that meeting and just a t safe space. And I host on Fridays. So come on Fridays. It's very good. Very nice. Um, how, do you, also, how did you first connect with that, support? Robert, like your, how did you first connect with support? So you read the book and you realized you're going to do this. When, you know, for some people, like getting that support is scary or, you know, there's a barrier. How did you initiate that getting a buddy? Um, I, I, I'm a rule follower and, and uh, in, in, it was then boot camp, right? Yes. Or it was, yeah, it was a boot camp back yeah. then. It was bright I, beginnings. It used to be called bright beginnings. Was it bright beginnings? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, it said, get a buddy, get a mastermind group, go, you just, you do, do getting games or no, it wasn't getting games yet because I it, it had to do finish bright beginnings. Um, before that, I think, I don't remember, but I, they said, get it. And so I got it. And um, I've had a really good experience because my, my original mastermind group is excellent. And I just, I love them to death. We, that was my first trip was motivated by meeting them. And um, they've been great. My first Gideon games team, we're still going up, going great. And we're planning another meetup in July. And everything that I've done in BLE has been just amazing. Uh, some people struggle finding that, you know, the right mix. And I've just been great. And this is falling out of my ear. I want to hear you all the time, but I, you'll have to talk louder. That's okay. I'll talk louder. Um, so yeah, I, and I, on this trip, I met my first buddy that we, she was on Facebook for like four minutes and quit BLE in like two weeks. And we just continued talking and now we're, now we're just friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, she cheered me on the whole way. Um, so even if they didn't work out really, they still worked out and mm -hmm. I've just kept, I keep upping it you know i i just up my support all the time the community is amazing the chat on a live call on the live amac and pmac are, are it's where i thrive and love everyone there so um i just the community and support is is everything mm -hmm. so which is a great segue to talk about this trip yeah 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 so do you, would you like me to ask a question or do you want I to? I would love you to ask a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, what is the motivation behind? Cause I know you've done this once before. This is your second, this is what is Patty's BLE road trip 
epic road trip number two. Yes. Oh. So, so talk about the first one and and the motivation behind that, and then talk about the this one okay. that you're all, still on. She's currently on it, guys. This is a stop on okay. the trip. Yes. That's it. Yes. On the Bright Line podcast, made right. the Patty road trip. <laughs> Absolutely, could not not stop. <laughs> um, but the first trip was motivated by my mastermind group. They were three, two live in Michigan and one lived in Ohio, which was very close to Michigan and Michigan's brightest did a conference, um, last October, September, I don't know, September, yeah. October last year. And they were three, they, all three of them were going. And, um, uh, I was like, well, wait, <laughs> I have to be there because you will all be there. And so I, and you don't live in Michigan. I don't live in Michigan. Right. I live in Southern mm-hmm. California, yeah. which is far from Michigan <laughs> right. and Ohio. And I, I thought about how I could go there. Um, they said, you, you, we'll stay in the hotel together. All four of us will be in two hotel rooms. And I started doing the vegetable math in that. Ooh. And I thought, oh, two little tiny refrigerators and four be leaders all oh. in the same space. Like that's going to be hard. So food comes first in my program. And I just decided... Oh, I think I'll just bring my food with me and, and be, take care of myself mm-hmm. and, uh, drive there. And I, I had, I've made a lot of friends in BLE on the way. So I just started doing the math on how far I could drive. And I stayed with Gideon game team, getting games teammates and mastermind, you know, members. And, um, I stayed with my aunt at one point, at one point, another aunt at another point, the last trip was just Southern California to Michigan and mm-hmm. back. And, um, it was, it was incredible. And I knew at that point that I I could do this for the rest of my life. I just wanted somebody should pay me to do this and just drive around and visit BLEers and, and take in just getting to know people where they're at and where they live and what they do. Mm -hmm. And like, I walk 10,000 steps, six out of seven days. So being able to walk with these people Mm -hmm. around their paths, around their homes, it's just, it feeds my heart. And I, I enjoy every, every stop. So that was the first trip. Okay. It it was motivated to get to Michigan and back. And the second Mm -hmm. trip, so that was two and a half weeks. I took two and a half weeks for that. I had vacation time. I used all my vacation time. And then that was like six months ago, seven months ago, maybe. And then there was another gathering. The pride group got together in Chesapeake Bay um, right before the eclipse. So that in the beginning of, of April. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, we should have incorporated the eclipse and done it in the path of totality, but we didn't. And okay. so we didn't plan that very well. But the, the trip was amazing. Chesapeake Bay was awesome. And that was my motivation in this trip. Like, okay, Chesapeake Bay, I can get there. Last time I went through the middle, I'm not going to repeat. So I've gone Mm -hmm. around and did a whole perimeter at this time of the United States and for four and a half weeks. So I pretty much doubled the trip. Right. Right. Yes. So do you have a count? Did you do a count? We talked about it. (laughs) Oh, oh no, we didn't do a count. Just kidding. Never mind. Forget I asked the question. No, (laughs) No, my friend Maria in Rochester, who I stayed with, um, she did a spreadsheet for me, a Google Google Doc, and I did write it down, but I didn't count it. Yeah, it's okay. So yeah, I do have it. And so it's a lot there. I think there's 21 stops. Oh, wow. Yeah. A lot of stops I met with only one person. Yeah. But the last few, I mean, obviously Chesapeake Bay, I, there was a lot of people in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like Wisconsin's brightest, we, they gathered around me and Minnesota's brightest. I just happened to be in Minneapolis or the Twin City area when they were meeting in their regular monthly meeting. And so there were 19 people in that one. And then wow. uh, of course I saw Susan Pierce Thompson mm-hmm. in Rochester mm-hmm. and then- Well, that's not of course. Like, 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 right, yeah, I was gonna say that. a little more let's detail there. Just a little bit and actually have that conversation. So mm-hmm. Patty reached out and said, I'm going to be on this trip mm-hmm. to Susan Pierce Thompson, who is the author of the book, Bright Line Eating and the, the one who began the program. Okay. Finish. So I did reach I'll out and back. said I was going to be in the area and I would love to meet her. And so, and she said, if it works out, because it was right around spring break and she was taking her kids on a trip. And so we just, we did firm it up and we, we got to meet. And then we also ran into her at Wegmans. Shout out to Wegmans. That's yeah, Wegmans is the grocery, her grocery store. Like that's the famous. Oh, yes. Grocery store. Yes. yes. And I did go there like the day before and I, I needed some things and I went and I was like, <laughs> but lingering in the vegetable section yeah. looking I, for SPT. I, I, the right. the section. I did not hang out because my vegetables were all in the car. I didn't need any vegetables. There you go. Okay. And I yeah, that would have been right. really great yeah. thinking, Robin. <laughs> but no. Um, but then the next day I met we all met in this cafe area 
where and we had lunch with Rochester's brightest, and she was like five tables down. Oh I'm like, is that my god, Susan! And it was, and she came and sat with us, and it was amazing. Oh. She she was just like talking to us, and we had conversations about yeah. you know her kiddos and and our transformations and uh, support and mm -hmm. Halloween and <laughs> costumes. I mean, it was just it was really nice. There were, all, there were four of us in Susan, and she was very gracious to, to have that conversation with us. And then we met later that day, just the two of us, and uh, just had a more, you know, intimate conversation. Mm -hmm. It was good. So yeah. met her twice. So, and then traveled along that road, and then next met Lynn Colston in Urbana, Urbana Illinois. I had a great conversation with her. And, and also... Hands. I'm sorry. Who is Lynn? Oh, Lynn Colston is one of the coaches in Bright Line Eating. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. The first person I talked to on an accountability call when I was struggling with dental surgery. And she's uh -huh. just, she's amazing, just gentle and loving and um, just in my heart. So I, I actually saw her on my first trip as well. And so I met up with her again on this trip. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also Joanne Campbell Rice, another coach in Minnesota. Um, she came to Minnesota's brightest and then afterwards we walked around and she got my steps in with me and it was, it was really nice to talk to her. I didn't get to see Lyndon Morris del Rio yeah. cause I didn't go into Canada. That's my next trip up the West coast into Canada and back down. That'll okay. be next July. So not this July, next July. So yeah, you're right. These headphones are horrible. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Sorry guys. Technical difficulties. The headphones yeah. are horrible. Uh, and we need them to hear Bonnie. So just that's yeah. why we're wearing headphones. Yeah. Hear Bonnie, Otherwise, so yeah. we can't hear Bonnie. So um, you guys have questions or should I continue on with my questioning? I'll continue on. Okay. So uh, a lot of people ask you about your food. How do you do your food on the road? Because you, mm -hmm. for the most part, take your food everywhere you go. I do take my food everywhere mm -hmm. I go because food comes first to me. And it, I, I am just calmer when I have my food taken care of. So I have a big dry dry goods box that I carry with me. I measured out all my, I had two ounces of nuts that I was doing mm -hmm. for breakfast. I have a lot of ads. So I, I have two ounces for nuts for breakfast and I do shredded wheat like friskets and just eat them. Cause most of my breakfasts are in the car, but every, all of my food is in my car. And, uh, I have two coolers that I use and, um, I can fit seven days of lunches and dinners, vegetables in there. It's, it's a lot of vegetables. Um, so I, I made, I, I, prep those before I left. And then mm -hmm. I counted out the days of seven days and I mm -hmm. would, um, set up where I would take two nights. Usually it's, I only stay one night and the next night, the next morning I'm off, but to do prep, I have to go to Costco and get everything. And I know exactly how much to buy at Costco mm -hmm. to get seven days of food. And, but I need that extra day. So I would make sure I have kitchen, kitchen space, mm -hmm. refrigerator space, somewhere to freeze the, the jugs of water for my cooler. And Every seven days, I do a prep day. So there's, I think there's four this time. And my last one will be in Reno, so. But I love that because I think there are so many people that think about, you know, the Bright Line plan and would say, oh, it's, it's, it's too hard, mm. right? And what you just named was, it's not too hard if that's what you want to put first, right? Mm. If, you, if you are willing to put the mm. time and the thought into it, it's not too hard. And the planning, I, yeah. I need to plan. Yeah. So, and a lot of people along the way have, have made me dinner. Like mm -hmm. Bonnie set us up for dinner tonight. Right. Like yeah. Bonnie's not she, here and she set us up for dinner. Right. Yes. Thank right. you, Bonnie. Thank you, yes. Bonnie. Thank you. We so love you. Much, Detailed instructions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank I botched you. the instructions. Sorry guys. My bad. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of people have fed me dinner and that's my lunches and dinners are very, the, the vegetables are the same. I eat the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. um, always, but I, I have just crudite for lunch and then dinner, I dice everything up for my chicken salad. Mm -hmm. And I did that the first, the first leg I did separate lunches and dinners, but then people kept feeding me dinner. And so at the end oh. of the, my seven days, I had dinners left over and no, uh, no way I'm, I can't eat them for lunch mm -hmm. because I don't, I don't know, maybe I could, but I didn't. And so I, I ended up throwing away a few packs of vegetables and that hurt me because I mm. haven't I don't throw away food yeah. I eat yeah everything I know exactly how much to get right and I do it and well, so we can talk about your food prep at home too because I think that's also a really important mm -hmm. component but we don't do it right now like okay. I was saying like zero weight like that's something that you know yeah you're pretty zero waste when yeah it comes to food prep, zero so. waste yeah zero waste uh, because that's how I don't I don't want to waste food mm -hmm. and that 
totally is that this lifetime, my last lifetime, I would get some vegetables and be like, okay, I'll eat these maybe. Right. Emotional support. The, emotion, the that, emotional support that, cucumber yeah. that, yeah, <laughs> that everyone And knows. then they get moldy. It and does get like, okay. squishy moldy. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So um, I changed it. So now I just do the same 20 ounces. And if I want to make chicken salad, I'll dice them up at where I am at. And it doesn't matter. They're all, I could eat them lunch or dinner. And uh, that's what I've done. And actually my first trip, because I was just planning and prepping whenever, you know, whenever I was done and I, I did this, but on my first trip, I'm like, no, seven days, I can do this. So every Friday now mm-hmm. I prep seven days and I have the entire week out. I, mm-hmm. I help my parents every week. Um, uh, and so it's just easier if I have that to grab and go um, mm-hmm. with that. So um yeah. So now every Friday I prep seven days and that's at home. I do that. Yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah. So seven days worth of meals every Friday, which leads to zero food waste, which is pretty amazing. So yeah. she knows exactly how much to buy at Costco every week. I do. I do. <laughs> it's very impressive. But I, yeah. I would say even like, I mean, I don't, I don't prep a week ahead, but because I eat so many vegetables and fruits, whatever I don't eat in this meal just gets added to the next meal. And so I, it is, I also am kind of stunned, like how much food used to rot in my refrigerator. And now I just, you know, like we weighed out a, the corn and the bag of corn, which mm-hmm. says 10 ounces, but it actually had like 10.5. So it's like that 0.5 just goes to lunch the next day and, and it just carries on. And it's like, nothing is wasted. And that's, that's a good feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So what has been your, the best part of this trip so far? So far, because she's not done yet. Right? I, I am not done yet. I, I am not. I'm it feels like I'm done because I'm in the this time zone and I'm headed south after this. But mm-hmm. I think the, the best thing was the thing that I planned it for was the the pride meetup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people there, I'd met some of them before, but it was it, there were six of us and we had three days. And so it was a lot of togetherness and a lot of of just deeper, you know, communion and just getting to know each other better. And, Mm -hmm. and, um, we met up actually last time, uh, last year, and that was, there was a lot of events. Like we're going to this, you know, national park, we're going to this, uh, uh, place where we're doing, there was a lot of scheduled stuff and that was, it was great. We had a great trip, Mm -hmm. but the last night we finally got together and talked and that was my favorite part, like just talking and getting to know people Mm -hmm. and, and then it was over and we went home the next day and I, and I thought, no. And so this time we, we didn't plan anything. We didn't have any excursions planned and it was just all talking and, and con- connecting. And that's, that's the best part about me, about this trip is connecting with the people. I didn't, I did some like touristy things, but not a lot mm-hmm. um, because I wanted to connect with who I saw and mm-hmm. who I met. And yeah. that's, that was a lot of connecting. So that was my favorite part. Okay. And let's talk, can we talk about the pride group just a little bit more like it's a subgroup. So just so people know, you know, in our community, there's a large community that, you know, the paid membership community. Yeah. And then we have all these like sub communities that are not part of the paid paid membership and the pride. There is a pride group that is part yes. of that, right? Yes. LGBTQIA2S plus. Mm-hmm. And I call it pride. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a, yes, a lot of it's syllables, mm-hmm. yeah. so. but um. Yeah, it's a great group, and we have a polo, a polo thread, Marco Polo, and Messenger, and a Facebook group. Mm-hmm. And this, like I said, this is our second meetup. We have a monthly Zoom uh, the second Saturday of every month. We we have a Zoom call that's an hour and a half, two hours with the with the social pit that's in front, mm-hmm. and we just have great topics and uh, a bunch of great people. Some are paid members, some are bright bookers, some right. are used to be members that that aren't anymore, and it's just a, a wonderful mix and i i'm grateful for yeah. that group very yeah. grateful so yeah and i think it's just important because i think a lot of people don't know that there's the, a, the pleth- a plethora of you know of options for support like it's just another form of support for it people is. to is. come together and you know in that way right um, because so. you want to be where you wanted to be represented you yeah. wanted to see yeah. people that you know make you feel at home and yeah. and safe and and that is a, the big part of that. And there's other 
you know, there's other groups, religious groups or vegans or yeah, um, bariatric you know, surgery groups. Yes. I mean, there's, there's a, yes, there's a ton Spinner of subgroups. Groups. Yes. There's yeah. a ton of subgroups um, that are not part of the paid membership. So anyone could potentially join. If you yeah. are not part of the paid membership mm-hmm. and are interested, you could definitely find, you know, Facebook is kind of the place where everybody lives. So there yeah. are Facebook groups. And-, and if you don't feel represented, what, what would represent you? And you start that up. That's yeah, right. Start that one. Yes. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've been doing a lot of question asking. Robin, Bonnie, do you guys have any burning desire questions? I think it's interesting that I think for you reading the book is what was your crucible moment. We've we've had conversations about the crucible moments, you know, like it just sounds like it gave an awareness from an awareness that was already there, but it put a, it put a name to it and it helped you understand the science of it. And I just think that is such a great, I love the idea that you didn't even know it was a no sugar and flour diet. And you just mm-hmm. read the book and learned about the science and it kind of clicked. And I, I had never thought of like presenting the program to anybody in that manner. Cause I feel like that's the first thing when people ask you what you're doing, well, I cut out sugar and flour. Right. But it's right. like, Maybe it's like, I follow this healthy macronutrient plan, read this book and learn about it that deals with food addiction. Right. Right. And I, I get that Bonnie, because as soon I've, I've talked about the program. I'm not a evangelist as Tony mm-hmm. Wade would say. Put a quarter in the jar. Yeah. But, <laughs> yes. but you, you say that to somebody and you see the wall come down like, Oh, I right. can't yeah. do that. There's no right. way I could do that. As soon as you say no sugar, no flour, I see right. it. And so I, because it, it did speak to me and, and I feel so lucky that they didn't say that because I, had they said it, I would have been the same way. Like, of course I could right. never do that. Right. And so I try to say that to other people and just, you know, say, read the book or, it's mm-hmm. a, it's a whole program, and mm-hmm. uh, you know I I'm a food addict. I don't know. I I don't really have my, you know, thirty second elevator pitch down, but I try right. not to say no sugar, no flour because that's that's how yeah. I got there. Interesting. I think one of the questions we've asked our other guests too is to talk about like whether they've had any slips or you know breaks in their lines, and then also what they do like an EAP. Do yeah. you have an EAP? Like, what do you do? That sort of thing. I, I do have an EAP, and I think it's still in my in my wallet, but I've never taken it out. I I mm-hmm. I did struggle in the beginning with a little crankiness um, when I was detoxing, and mm-hmm. I thank goodness I live alone, and I could just you know go take a nap, and I wasn't working, so mm-hmm. I could go take a nap. And a lot of people don't have that luxury. A lot of people with families. A lot of people, you know, have to work 40 hours or more. Mm-hmm. And so I feel really lucky um, the way the way my plan has gotten out. But I I, I haven't had a break. And like I said, I, I, I have a healthy fear of that, which I don't know if that's a really great way to look at recovery, but that is my my path. Sure. So yeah. And I feel like I'm now I'm guiding a few people and um, uh, guiding them through maintenance. Um, but mm-hmm. I feel almost an ad- inadequacy because I don't know how it feels to like struggle back from a break. And, mm-hmm. um, I, I can be supportive. I can be, I'm a great cheerleader, but I don't know how that feels. So I, that's, it's, it's a, I, I feel like it's a failing in my guide relationship. So it's but. not, it's not a failing though. It's just not something you've experienced, but just because you haven't experienced something yourself doesn't mean that you can't guide someone through it based on the principles of BLE and all the tools that we have and just being a voice to provide some non-judgmental ears. I definitely can do that. Mm-hmm. And there are plenty of guides out there that have had the experience too. I think that's sure. the other thing about in the guide, you know, guide guidey relationship is finding somebody that you fit with and that you click with and that mm-hmm. wants to work with you in the same in the same way. So I don't think it's a failing at all there, but that's just my personal mm-hmm. opinion. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. you're welcome. Uh so I think a good question we always ask is is there anything that you could have said to yourself pre BLE that would have gotten you gotten you here quicker? Hmm. That's a very good question. I, I really don't think there was, I, maybe, you know, you'll figure out the vegetables. Oh, <laughs> right. Been, yeah. Right. That was, that was hard. Don't be scared of vegetables. Right. Right. <laughs> right. You will, you'll get there. Don't worry. Yeah. You know, because okay. I, a lot of, 
um, my, uh, gosh, who was it? A friend, somebody, a friend, um, hockey family that I, that I know that wants to do it, but she says, I can't do the vegetables. I don't like vegetables. And yeah. I, I tried to say the same thing. I yeah. feel you. I know yeah. how that feels. And I, you know, your taste buds change and we know that yes. as soon as you stop eating sugar and flour, you can taste again. And yeah. yeah vegetables taste good and you find the ones that work for you and and you know some people need variety i binged on the same four foods for seven years before i started this life and mm -hmm. you know i've been eating the same ble foods for two and a half years mm -hmm. now yeah give or take i mean i do make changes i started a new breakfast thank you megan mm -hmm. and i have added other vegetables Hashtag I, never, food influencer. <laughs> I never ate tomatoes in my previous life like if they touched anything on my plate i would not eat that thing like oh. that's how much i hated tomatoes and now i wow. eat eight pounds of tomatoes a week mm -hmm. so yeah wow but i think food neutrality yeah, you're, I think that's but, uh, oh go ahead bonnie sorry i was talking over you. sorry I said, I said, I think that's so true. Your, your taste buds change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just think about, um, like I went to visit my mom and I, you know, bought Brussels sprouts and broccoli and carrots on the filter fridge. And she was just like, Oh my God, that smells horrible. And oh. don't ever bring this in my house again. <laughs> just like, they're delicious. Like, yeah. you know, I, I would have thought that before too, because I didn't eat any vegetables. <clears throat> but I think there's a food neutrality. You I also too. think like, like we used to, we used to like, we used to want a variety of foods. I can remember like having a different meal every night and still like, I'm bored with this. And how are we going to come up with different food to cook? Cause right. I just, you know, you know, like that was a big drama about what are we going to eat? Cause I'm tired of that. Cause we had that last week. And it's so funny. Cause like we eat literally like you, Patty, Patty, very similarly, almost the same food every day. And I'm not tired of it. It's funny. I'm not worried about needing the meal to be <clears throat> creating a dopamine hit in and of itself. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Food, food is, because we talked about this amongst the three of us that like food used to be our entertainment like yeah. that was used to be the way right. that the three yeah. of us would go out and spend time socialize. together yeah we would socialize with food so it's like when you take away when food becomes just the utilitarian mm -hmm. like this is what you eat like it becomes you become neutral around it mm -hmm. or you can become neutral around it. no i shouldn't say you do oh i'm yes. definitely neutral and i love that neutrality yeah and I struggled with dinner at first because I, I was trying different things, like you said, Bonnie. And mm -hmm. when I found the chicken salad that I eat every night, mm -hmm. I I was thrilled. I came I came home and I was like, I could eat this every night. It was that good. And I I I'm I'm a modest, but my chicken salad's pretty good. It's mm -hmm. on the internet. I was just gonna say we it's might... on the internet. Yeah. It is. Okay. Yes. It's on brightlineeats.com okay. if you're interested. It's called Patty's Chicken Salad. Oh okay. yes. search in the search bar. <laughs> And Bonnie, I have to tell you, when I opened your fridge to get a fizzy water out, something out of there, you have a patty amount of tomatoes in your fridge. And I've yes. Like, I yes. this fridge. Oh, wait till the summer when I have them in the yard. And then it's like, yeah. we have a on patty amount of tomatoes and it's yeah. like, you got to figure out. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think, um, one of the things I'm trying to think of, you know, the follow-up questions we always ask people, you know, what did you want to be when you grow up? That's always a silly question, but I like to hear it because it kind of gives sure. me an idea of who people are. And yeah, absolutely. I, I wanted to be a teacher when I grew up and I did teach for a little bit. I taught math and science middle school. Um, but uh, the administration, You're a brave, I, brave woman, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not, it was not a fun, I mean, I, I did enjoy it, when my administration was very supportive and mm -hmm. then the next year I got the regular administration, I started with an amazing administration and I thought, this is great. This is how right. it always is. And this right. is just wonderful. And I didn't know the tremendousness that they were. Oh. And then they all left and I thought, okay, I'll keep going. And, oh, it was not good. Oh. So, but yeah. And, but then I went on to sub and did other things and I am a great mm -hmm. tutor. Mm -hmm. I, I think I have a teaching spirit inside me and mm -hmm. I, I've, Hope to get, hope to get back there, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What's your next adventure? That's that was my question. Very good, Bonnie. Good segue. What's your next adventure? My next BLE adventure. My next life adventure. 
Well, answer yeah, the exactly. question as you will. <laughs> Go for it. Well, like I said, my next my next road trip, that's my big adventure, will be up the West Coast and into Canada because I haven't I haven't gone into Canada yet and there's a lot of people in BLE. There's in a Canada. lot of BLE people in Canada. Oh yeah. wow. So I really want to I really want to hit that. And there's a lot of, I mean there I want I would love to see Banff and you know the national yeah. uh, I don't know, is that what you call yes. it? National yeah. Park and uh-huh. yeah. Canadian Canadian yeah. Park. Um and I'm a huge hockey fan, so mm-hmm. Um, what you're a huge hockey fan hockey. I am, I'm a huge hockey <laughs> fan which is weird born and raised in southern california but um oh right yeah. right right so <laughs> Yeah, get your ducks for those sweatshirt. That are she yeah. is wearing an Anaheim Ducks sweatshirt. Yeah. So if you cannot see, it is the Anaheim Ducks. There you go. Yes, yeah. yes, huge Ducks fan. Uh, but so that'll that'll be my next adventure there, and then I I definitely want to get a new job. That's that's going to be a big adventure. Nice. Not, not happy with my job right now. I uh, hope no one's listening. They might be. I don't, I don't think it's, <laughs> well, I think it's, it's, it's is it a secret? secret? It's yeah, definitely not a secret. Well, and I think one of the things we talk about with BLE too is like once you conquer this, you know, food addiction, like you, yeah. you start looking at other places in your life yep. that you're like, okay, well, how can I apply BLE principles to, right. you know, to other places in my life? Where else do I need to make changes Yeah, to bring a full and joyful life? Right. And it's joyful and peace. And those are, you know, the neutrality. Yeah. That's what I love in my BLE mm-hmm. life. And that's not what I have at work. So yeah, yeah, definitely awesome. need to change that. Bonnie, yeah. Robin, uh, I think that's the that's the that's the that's the creme de la creme right there. I yep. think once you yeah once you have the neutrality, you're able to open up to new possibilities in other parts of your life that you just didn't have the what bandwidth for when you're just you know fixated mm-hmm. on. Yeah. And stuffing yep. and stuffing the the problem right. with food. You know, once you don't have that crutch, yeah, you know, you have to look at those things and yeah, and that was and huge... feel them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Feel your feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Robin, any thoughts? No, I think I think that says so much that when you're not stuffing those those feelings down and you allow yourself to feel them, it, it makes you um it allows the opportunity for you to look at other things in your life and say, What you know, what else do I want? Yeah. 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 What would bring me joy? Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, road tripping is obviously something that brings Patty joy. Yeah, <laughs> we Definitely. look forward to hearing about uh, Patty's BL adventure number three, road- <laughs> BL harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, BL everywhere. That's right. right. <laughs> so for those um, that are not part of the official community, uh, there is an Instagram account. It is Patty's BLE adventures, uh, underscores in between, but you can look her up on Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. People within the community, there is a uh, Marco Polo and... There are lots of posts going out on the Facebook community Mm -hmm. um, about her travels. If you want to keep up, that is the best way to do it. And they're chronicled there too. So Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say thank you so much, Patty, for coming on um, and telling us about your road trip. I'm excited to see what the next adventure is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And shout out to my dad because this trip is with my dad in my heart. And uh, Um, yeah. yeah. So awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate mm-hmm. it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me in your home, Bonnie. Yes. Yeah. And cooking oh, dinner from right. halfway or the other side right. of the country. Right. <laughs> that I botched. Sorry. Anyway. Sorry, Emma. No, no, no. We miss you, Bonnie. We miss you. We hope to see you in person yeah. sometime soon. <laughs> it's going to pretty soon. It is going to yeah. happen pretty soon. We'll all be in the same place mm-hmm. again. So. Uh, Well, that is our episode today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, you can email us at onthebrightlinepodcast at gmail.com or hit us up on our socials. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.